Hello and welcome. I'm George Call to part two of North of Banff. Um, wow, today was balance day. And so you start to see how these different value colors are really starting to have a lot of strength and working together. I worked all over the canvas except the clouds. I haven't gotten up there yet. Um, but tomorrow is, or part three is going to be a uh, detail and we can work on it then. And uh, so catch up with me if you're not already where I'm at. And uh, get outside and paint. Paint with your friends. Get critiques. And uh, don't be intimidated by a white canvas. All right. Let's start painting. All right. Hey, good morning, and welcome to uh, part two of um, North of Banff. So this is the Canadian Highway between Jasper and Banff. What a great, beautiful place this is. So I really like how this came out, you know, value-wise. I'm contemplating a mistake I made. Maybe I'm going to live with it because I like it. The, uh, the dark is a little higher on the reference, but sometimes, you know, we can compose things the way we like them, okay? And so that might be just a way for me to keep that there, and I'll increase the size of the glacier. So that's the way that would be. All right. So where am I going to start today? I want to balance things. That's the whole thing of part two is getting the balance right. And to tell you the truth, the balance is pretty good. So I'm going to refine the colors within the balance, uh, within the major shapes. Here's a major shape. Here's one. Here's one. These are major shapes. And uh, that's what I'm going to be spending my time on in today and um, working with you with. Okay. So, have your coffee close by, which I did not, so I'm going back to get it. And I have my coffee on top of my stove. I have electric heat here in the studio, but I also have a wood stove. And I just love the way wood heat heats the place. It's just wonderful. So, let's start with some mixtures and get started. Okay. So what I'd like to uh, start on is this big dark in here. So I'm going to pick some olive. I'm going to put a little blue in it. A little bit more olive. And a little bit of light gray. Excuse me, let me take a look. Oh, that was way too much. Oh, it's, my phone is telling me it's time to start class. Hey, I've started class already, for goodness sakes. Back to blue, back to blue, there's a nice deep rich green. I want to, if I'm going to work in this area right here, I need to have some rich dark greens. Now I'm going to make some really offshoots of that, of some brown and some ultra blue. So there's some really dark and here's some in between. All right, enough mixing. Let's get to painting. So I'm going to start with a number four, 2025. It's a hog hair type brush. It's a little stiff. Let me just get some canola oil in it. There we go. Let me see what this light color is going to do in here. Too light. Let's go a little darker. And I'm going to be working these Things that kind of look like vertical strokes, but they're something to do with pine trees, or maybe have the shape of pine trees. It's 
still has a nice dark to it. So now I'm going to go to brown, ultra, blue, brown, ultra. And I'm going to make sure I have some good darks on the, on the base here. And I want to get some trees in here. I know you're saying that's maybe that's a little too much detail for right now. I know. But I've got this nice value color all mixed up, so I might as well get this stuff in the foreground. And I think we also had a nice outlet right here. So let's get a small knife. I lost my connoisseur. It's this place somewhere. So I'm going to use this little guy and see if he can do the job of telling us that there's something coming out of here. There it is. I'm going to add a little bit of light viridian to this mixture. Light viridian. I'm going to get some cobalt, light viridian, cobalt. Give some impression that something is going on here. some of these peekaboo white spots coming through. And maybe just a tree or two to break this up over in here. Let me get back and see if that value color is working. Okay, looking good. All right, I don't know if I'm going to be able to use any of this stuff, but I think there's one more value in here that we need to work on. And if you look closely at the reference, there is a uh, gravel field or something coming through. It's, it's warm, so I'm going to just get some yellow ochre in here. Yellow ochre. and have that coming down. these photographs with my phone way back when. And, uh, so I'm going to pick this all up and move it over and save it for later because I've got a nice pile of it. Alright. Let me see how I'm doing on time. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 21 minutes left. I better not dilly-dally. Okay. I think I need to, where to start up in here, and I think I'm going to go with some softer brushes and smaller brushes, softer and smaller, to do some value work here. Sorry to be in front of things, I'm looking at my brush collection. Where are my little soft guys? Oh, I think I just found my connoisseur. Bingo, that's nice to find. 
And I think this is going to do just fine right here and here. So I've just pulled out a number two long flat 2025. So it's a stiff small one. And then I have another kind of softer from that, a long flat 279. It's a number two also. So I'll be using these guys. And the way I arrange my side table is to I have my two turps. One's kind of a dirty turp, and then, uh, then a, a lighter one. I shouldn't say turp, it's gamsol. Um, but um, that's what's over on the right. And I use my brushes I'm not going to use right now over to the far left of my side table. And the ones that I'm going to use right now will be on the left. So I try to have these systems where I can go to these things kind of easily and find them. I'm going to work on shapes and values right now. Let me see if I can. Start with this 279. And I'm going to make some grays. Oh, not a dark gray. Hmm. Uh, 717 Rembrandt gray. I think it's called cold gray. I want to get a little purple. I'm going to get some light gray, and now some dark gray, a little bit more purple. This is a diazazine purple. And I'm also going to make a lighter side to it, right here. I just added some titanium to the side of the mixture. I'm going to start with the darker stuff. I need a little bit more purple in there. So I'm mixing with my brush, which isn't the smartest thing to do. And I need some right over into here, I think. And I need some over into here. I'm going to just regular gray here. And I need some this gray here. 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 I'm just really intensely looking at my my uh, reference and saying, where is this stuff going to go? And I'm just taking good shots at it with a value color with my soft brush. And here. And there's some good grays over in here. We can always get rid of them if they're not cooperating. Okay, that's a little dark, and there's a little bit in here, a lighter gray, in this area here, and some in this area too. So see where your lights are going to be and where your darks are going to be. And apply accordingly. So sometimes I just put it on hard, sometimes I put it on light. So here would be a hard stroke, here would be a lighter stroke. I, so I change the angle for my lighter stroke because there's less of the fiber of the brush touching the canvas. This is a little too dark right in here, so I'm going to lighten it here. 
I added just a little titanium to my to my guy there, and there we go. Let's next go to the green, which is here, and let's make a mixture of emerald, olive, olive, and white. I'm going to have to add some ultra to that and knock it down just a little. I think I need more olive. More olive. I'm going to clean my number two, 279, and go into the emerald now. See how that works. I like the intensity of it. Let me get back and check this value color here. Oh, I love that. It's working, it's working. <gasps> My goodness. That's too intense. Calm it down with a grayer green. There's your grayer green. That was a little too white, so I'm going to get some more intensity in there. I got some, I have some, of the leftover green from this morning. I'm going to add more blue, more blue, ultra, a little bit more brown. I'm going to work on that down here. I am moving the darks up into the emerald. And now I'm going to add some emerald into the dark. It's kind of an in-between. And start adding some of that in here. I have two, like, three little the sames here, so let me break one up and put the intensity maybe more on the top. I'll add this to the top to where it's lighter. And I think those are pine trees. Yeah. All right, let's go to the lighter color here, the, the warm color. I need to keep my grays and I think my greens a little handy, but they're taking up a little too much space. So let me move them over just a little bit, and I can probably still get some mileage out of them. And let's get into the warm tones. Cleaning my brush, changing from cool to warm, and now let's get some transparent oxide red. A little bit of cad yellow medium, cad yellow, cad yellow, and light over here. I need to make a lot more of this stuff. see my progressions here. I have a light, medium, and dark. So let's start with the medium. It's a little too dark, so I'm going to add a little white to it and make sure I, I need the lighter stuff. So I'm going to go to the lighter stuff in here. 
lighter stuff. And it comes, it comes down in here, and here. It's really quite light here. It's really getting the morning light. And I need to soften the gray a little bit with the gray. Did you see how I turned my brush because I had some contamination in it? I could tell when I pulled it that I had some contamination. And now I'm going to, I need to get some of the lights in my green here in various places. And that's a little too contrived, that green guy right there. So let me knock him down just a little bit. That's better. And this is a little too contrasty between the light and the dark. And so I'm knocking that down too. But I do need a good light there. I just looked back at the reference and I said, there is a good light right in here. And this is going to get bigger. The, the light warm is getting bigger right in here. And we need to get some up in here too now. And we want to get some light on this side. Just follow it around and take a look. and then. Look at the magic that's happening. Oh la la! It is a working so well. I'm going to go to the medium stuff here and think about getting some of that in here and in here. I need to get a little bit of Gamsol on here to get some flow on this. And I need to work on Mr. Dark right there. And I need some grays coming down. Right, lighter grays in here. That's a little too strong of a gray. And let's go back to a darker gray then. Get some purple in that thing. Get that dark over here. And lighten him up just a little bit. There. And I need a good strong dark right in the smacker, right in there. Didn't show up. What's going on? More gray. More gray. Yeah, that kind of has to say what it has to say. And it does! Let's move on to this big boy here. So, there are some actual, there's a little bit of green in some of these mixtures. So let me just get a little little bit of emerald into the light gray and a little bit of transparent oxide red lighten that up and a little bit more emerald please which is going to act as a darkener and I'm going to lighten it with a little bit of cad yellow it was a little off, so I'm adding green again. All right, let's stop mixing and start painting, huh? If you find yourself mixing more than painting, that's okay. But I do have to keep purging of my responsibilities to the time clock here. And I want to carve out 
this snow field here, here. Let's go back with a lighter warm. Right in here. And I want to get a bright right in here. I need to go back and make a structural change here. There is a bigger area of light in here. So I need to lighten this up. To do that, I'm going to add just a touch of Gamsol and get that fixed. And I'll add just a little bit of gray on the edge to kind of show, hey, that's back there. And this is what's in front and what's in back. All right, let's get into the gray neighborhood here and bring it right up to, going to do some shape changes in the snow field. And I'm going to get some darker gray and bring this into here. And I'm going to make some darker stuff on the base and in a few places in this almost lit area of this shape. But there's a big dark coming in here. And I'm going to go gray purple right in here. And this is even darker. All right, so mm -hmm. this seems awfully big, so let me shrink him down a little bit. And then I will look at the clock and see how we are doing. I think that was too dark on that last hill. Let's lighten him up. Lighten him up. There we go. And he can be just a tad lighter too. Now, we still need some lights coming through here in a nice way. Let me get back and see this thing. Get a new paper towel. Oh, that's looking nice. Okay, how's my time doing? Oh, we're getting down to two minutes. So, I want you to keep doing what I've been doing. And the last thing I want you to do is think about getting some snow in there. So I'm going to get some white with just a little bit of cobalt in it. Cobalt. And I want to make a shadow over here. And then I want some brighter stuff. I'm still in the cobalt, but I'm adding a lot of titanium to it. And I'm going to be working this snow field here. I think it's probably a glacier. And then I need this to go up into here. And I need a snow field here. And last but not least, a good snow field coming down from here. And that it's going to go up into cobalt. I think that 
thing is going to go off here in a second and scare the, the Jesus out of me. So I'm going to... Bring this to an end. Okay, thanks so much for part two. And I'll see you, and we'll finish this painting, hopefully, in part three. All right.